views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio with me, Claire Candy Hoff. Now, to start the show today, I'd like to remind everyone that as of May 29th, that today, we are all under the influence of an extremely positive full moon in Sagittarius, which is bringing us opportunities for fortunate expansion. Now, I love Sagittarius as it's my rising sun, uh, rising sign, and Sagittarius represents the quest for truth, travel, freedom, adventure, finding solutions, deep gratitude, and of course, fortunate expansion, just just feeling plain lucky and blessed, with life finally opening possibilities for many of us to advance forward with our creative powers. It is paramount that we listen to our guts and we trust our instinct and we act on the divine information that we receive. Please don't try to figure out this divine intervention, this divine uh, information, just act on it. This will fill us with confidence and it'll be our emotional compass to give us new direction. And remember to take some time in solitude and reflection to spend some alone time to bless the gifts that are coming in now and appearing in our life for you know what? You have earned them. So it's going to be um, a very exciting uh, time for many. Now, to finish up May's theme of the afterlife and heaven, today is the last show in May. We have a show today which is entitled Soul Soul Contracts, Our One True Home, behind the veil of forgetfulness. Now, in a previous interview, the radio host was asking me questions about my channeled book, which is, it's the back of it, which is One True Home, behind the veil of forgetfulness. And uh, he was asking me specifically how I wrote 
and brought to light the detailed way that each one of us writes the contracts of our lives before we incarnated into physical form. You know, I explained that there are no mistakes, there are no oversights, there are no errors, no matter what we experience as a result of these soul contracts, these connections and situations that we wrote and we set up for us to experience. Now, he found it very difficult to believe that if we have free will, why is it that so many people would choose to purposely write into their contracts uh, abuse? Why would they write hateful, controlling people that cause them such heartache, suffering, and pain? In addition to purposely choosing these souls with contrasting agendas to be part of our contracts, it is unfathomable to some souls um, that some souls write in their contract to experience horrendous things like cruelty and mistreatment. Now, the Posse of Angels wishes for us to know that when we look at our contracts solely through our physical eyes, it is impossible to comprehend how experiencing these things could help us in any way. Its own ways is their to encompass their multidimensional natures. Can we really see how the puzzle pieces of our seemingly hard to fathom contract choices that they were ultimately written for not only the greatest good of ourselves, but the greatest good of all concerned? For instance, in, in my book, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, I write about my five most important past lives, and they were the most important because my soul grew the most spiritually from these experiences. Now, for instance, in one of those lives, I chose great wealth and recognition as a courtesan in the 1500s in Venice, Italy. Now, for those who may not know, a courtesan is a high-priced prostitute. And uh, they were very learned in those days because they were the only ones who could access the libraries. And although it was a spectacularly lavish life, um, after I crossed over, when I returned to heaven and I sat with the wise sage elders of the Etheric Council to review my contract, I could see it very differently with very clear vision how extremely haughty and arrogant I was and how I treated people beneath me in social standing and material wealth. I treated them like servants with contempt and disregard. So when I had rested in heaven between those lives and the afterlife and I decided I chose to come back for another human incarnation, I actually chose a life in which I would experience what it would be like to be someone who was a servant, to have all my freedoms and all my choices taken away. So I actually chose to be a young black girl captured off the west coast of Africa and sold into slavery in the United States. That life was absolutely horrific, but it helped my soul to grow spiritually. And that is what we are here for, ultimately, for our soul's growth. And that particular life advanced my understanding of things like compassion, tolerance, forgiveness, and acceptance for others, no matter who they are, no matter what material wealth or money they have, and certainly they, and they deserve respect and honor, no matter what color their skin is. Now, in no way am I making light of, uh, uh, making light of, or saying that choosing a life in which I had to endure uh, such degradation, abuse, and hardship, I'm not saying that that was easy, but my soul grew so immensely from that life that when I rested in heaven and when I came back, I chose to incarnate again. I chose to be a wise member of the Native American Lakota tribe 
and I was able to then share all of my wisdom that I had garnered from experiencing such a harrowing life as a slave. I know, again, it is difficult to see the enormous effect that our different incarnations have on the growth of our soul when we just view it with our physical sight. I love the saying that the most accomplished sailors do not learn how to sail in calm waters, and it's only by being tried and tested, challenged, that we learn our most important skills and lessons in life. Now, the posse of angels, they're chiming in and they're reminding us that along with specific lessons that we chose to learn in our contracts, the strengthening of our character and the strengthening of our convictions in what we believe in and holding true to that is an important part of the human experience. Now, in another one of my incarnations in my novel, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, I describe my life as a gifted psychic and healer in 14th century Scotland and the enormous effects that my actions and my beliefs had on the poor serfdom community that I was a part of. And it was enormous in strengthening the other serfs self-reliance, empowerment, and belief in themselves. And while this was great for the serfs, the priests of the church noticed that the serfs were indeed happier and more empowered. <coughs> Excuse me. And they did not lean on the church for their direction and strength anymore. Hence, the congregation numbers were dwindling. And so with the amount of tithes to add to their coffers. And while I, in that uh, lifetime, my name was Annabelle Rose MacDonald, while I saw many signs and that I was going against the church, I knew deep in my heart that being true to myself and true to my gifts was very important. Excuse me. Oh, a drink of water. Excuse me. Um, so I kept being true to myself and I kept, I didn't silence who I was and I didn't hide away my gifts, my God given abilities as a psychic and a healer. Now, if you're going to read the book, please block your ears here for there is a spoiler coming up. Not choosing not to hide my gifts my spiritual gifts, and choosing to continue to help others. The church demonized me, called me a witch, and basically destroyed me. But I won't say any more how that happened because it will spoil the read. And when I crossed over into heaven after that lifetime, harrowing life that it was, I went to spirit hospital to rest to recuperate and recover from my horrific experience until I was strong enough to go through my life's review and to go over my contract in my book of life with the wise sages, the etheric council. Now, I remember when the council asked me to share with them what I had learned from that life. I was the most proud of how I held tight to my conviction of being true to myself and not diminishing my life because of the dictates of an authority, which in this case was the church. Now the posse of angels wishes to remind us that it's important to know that no soul is ever forced to have a human life. And we freely choose to incarnate to experience a physical world of duality. And a lot of people ask me, why would we choose this? And I said, say, on the other side, um, in heaven, Shambhala, Paradiso, Nirvana, <laughs> whatever you want to call that, across the veil, um, we know things in theory. But in order to really learn them, we incarnate in human form to learn them practically. And once you learn something practically, you're more than likely not to forget it because of the experience. 
which is lacking across the veil. Many who are awakened and conscious, who choose to come back and have chosen to come back, let's say in the last 60 years, have chosen to help bring more light and love to the world and to help in shifting the consciousness on the planet. And while this was a very large part of their reason to come back, in addition, each soul also chose to have lessons while they were here. Many chose very difficult circumstances to experience in order for their souls to uh, advance and for those for them to be presented with the duality of contrast. And they, uh, this was so that they could work on this, these lessons as they had not fully addressed them and learned them in previous incarnations. Now, for example, most often souls who have been controlled or hurt in other past lives will choose to return and play the role of being controlled or hurt so that they can experience how others felt as a result of their actions in previous lives. Let's say if one was a thief in a previous life, we might choose to then be a victim of a crime to balance out the karma in our lives and have been faithful and perhaps we committed adultery in a previous incarnation, you know, perhaps we found ourselves to be the one who finds out that our partner, our wife, or our husband is cheating on us. It's the law of reciprocity. It's the laws of cause and effect and that karma to come back and balance out those scales. These soul contracts that we make are made to learn forgiveness and unconditional love. And they are very important as these two actions are fundamental in clearing and cleansing negativity and thus again trans transmuting karma. With our free will, souls may not choose to forgive. And you know, nobody has to choose to love unconditionally. And if they don't choose this what this way, uh, they stay on the cycle of that birth and death wheel until these things are learned and taken to heart. Now, some people have said to me, when you cross over, you cross over. Who cares if the scales of karma are balanced? But you only rise to the level um, of energy within yourself. And um, those levels are levels of light filled energy. And so the ones closest to heaven are really the ones that are the darkest murkier planes. And as you enlighten, then your energy rises and then you get to experience the higher vibrational energies across the veil. Now in my novel, One True Home, it clearly shows that with each incarnation that we choose um, we chose souls to help us along our journeys. In the first incarnation that I speak about in my novel, I start the novel as myself, as a young, naive Egyptian princess. I find myself being married off to an aged, sick, decaying pharaoh. My despair and my misery is turned around by meeting two young souls that helped me in my quest of being true to myself, true to my heart, and not compromising myself in love. Now, as the Posse of Angels mentioned in previous radio programs, our soul contracts are not one-sided, but are put into place in order for the growth and the expansion of each one of the parties, but not only that, but for all concerned when it comes to a life. And we come back time and time again, lifetime after lifetime, to play different roles to help each other. Now, these souls are in our soul groups because they are most like us and they are aligned and they resonate most with our energies. And, you know, it doesn't matter if they play a, a big part or a small part in our incarnation. And it doesn't matter if they play 
a seemingly good part or a seemingly horrible part as all parts and all soul contracts are extremely important. For instance, a soul could choose to be our kindly grandparent in a previous life. And then we could choose um, for them to be an abusive spouse in another life. Um, a lot of people just say, you know, it was a, a good choice because they were good and they were kind and they were supportive. And this, this uh, soul's character um, caused us pain and suffering as they were deceitful and hateful and conniving. Um, but it's in those lives that present us with the most ad adversity and hardship that a lot of the times we grow the most. And while we have focused on my previous physical incarnations and the lessons that I learned, One True Home also paints an extraordinary clear picture of what happens to us when we cross over to the afterlife. We cross over the veil. You know, um, as I've stated on many uh, radio programs, when we cross over, <laughs> we are not immediately given a halo and a harp and spend eternity floating around on a cloud. And thank goodness for that, because how deathly boring would that be? I explain in detail in my book how each one of us will have our homecoming party with souls who welcome us back to heaven. Now, this is not to agree with the life that we led. It's not to condone or condemn our life. Um, or condone or condemn the choices that we made that when we were in human form, but because we had the strength to choose to come back and to endure a physical life, we then will go to our lives to review. Um, our life will appear to us like a, a flip screen, like a holographic film that shows us from birth to when we crossed over and the actions and the and uh, and the life that we led, but it's not just seeing the life; it's seeing how our thoughts, our words, and our actions, how that elicited feelings and in another person. So it's great if we were loving and we were kind, but if we were hateful and deceitful and we were um, vengeful we will feel how that made another person feel. Um, and, it's a, and it's a great way of, uh, of really seeing how our energies affected others. And then we will certainly go to the Hall of Akashic Records where we will go over our contract in our Book of Life with the Etheric Council. Then after that, we can choose if we want to go to spiritual school this is where I, Angel Ariel, who is now in the body since my angelic walk-in in 2003, this is where I taught many souls um, uh, about their lives, the choices they made, and, um, and, this, and to remind them of the spiritual laws. We can choose varying levels of heaven where we continue to learn and to grow and to create and express ourselves with joy and creativity. For instance, those uh, who love, love plants, nature, gardening, flowers, and animals can go to a specific level. Uh, a lot of the times, this is where the fairies, the pixies, the dwarves, the gnomes, the leprechauns, the, the mermaids, the ondines, they love this level because they are elementals and they are drawn to the uh, plant kingdom and also animals. I share information about other levels in heaven where creatives like musicians, artists, writers like myself can continue to write, compose, do what they love doing, and channel it to earth souls. Then there are levels specifically for scientific exploration, inventions, and the development of technology to clean up and to better our, uh, our beautiful planet. Choosing what we love to do in the afterlife, being able to appear exactly as we would like, 
and to live in the exact house and location that we wish to live in rent free. These are all areas that add up to the reason that it's called heaven. Now, the posse of angels is suggesting that as you go through your week, please take a long really good look at the people that you have in your life for each one of them was carefully carefully orchestrated and written into your life by your own hand so there is no blame you put them there they are reminding all of us that our most important lessons that we need to learn are shown to us in every single day through our connections through our relationships as they have all been catalysts to lead us to achieving our purpose and learning the lessons that we contracted to learn this time around on earth. And, you know, I spoke about last week um, about the Uranus er energies um, that moved into Taurus last week. And these were specific to help us materialize and ground our goals into physical reality. So when I chose an animal card from my animal deck to give us an additional message, silently swan swam in. With the swan card reflecting the map of effort movement, creativity, and sensitivity, it attunes us to the elegant mystic within all of us to be able to create this potent energy. Um, and uh, it's the seemingly gentle, simple movements of the swan, they're certainly not to be taken lightly. It's calling for our attention to wait silently for our inner voice to be heard and our inner vision to reveal to us what our next divinely guided inspired action will be. And we spoke about in, uh, in the channel that please, uh, and the full moon tonight is, is getting us, please follow our instincts. Please follow our intuitive natures and please um, don't question the divine information that is coming in for us now, which is going to direct our steps to move forward. Please note that swan energy does not um, resonate with pushing or forcing an issue <laughs> because if we try to force something to happen, we'll create agitation and being absolutely frustrated. It's calling upon our infinite creative powers and asks us to make time to be in solitude and quiet while opening to allow the creative potential to flow and channel through us and to passionately create. So thank you, lovely swan. And it goes swimming on the pond. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. If you would like a reading with myself and my lovely uh, angelic family, the Posse of Angels, do call in on 1 800 930 2819. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In, 
which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. Claire Candy Hoff on Angel Healing House Radio. Do remember that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. PST here on Transformation Talk Radio. And if you're just joining us now, um, I started the show um, at 9 o'clock this morning, um, uh, reminding everybody that there is a full moon. That full moon is in Sagittarius, and it's opening up very fortunate expansion uh, for us to connect with opportunities. Um, uh, It uh, connects with truth and travel and freedom and adventure and optimism and and just feeling lucky and feeling blessed. So uh, many of us are going to be uh, receiving information on how we can step forward and uh, and serve the planet uh, with our skills, our abilities and our uh, and our gifts. So um, it is a very exciting time as we go into the summer months here in the northern hemisphere. And hello to all my friends in Australia as um, as they are going into their winter months. Uh, let's take our first caller. If you want to call in for a free angel reading, please do call in on 1-800-930-2819. Uh, let's go to Stephanie in New York. Stephanie, you're online with Angel Healing House. Hi. Hi. Uh, so uh, I was wondering, you know, what they what they had to say about a uh, career or how to step forward and um, or if something is more important for me to know right now. I'm open to that too. Okay. But, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, they, they want us to understand that as a conscious collective, uh, we have gone beyond careers we have and because when you when you think in the old paradigm of career um you're in the piscean age uh, the piscean age was i do therefore i am um you know i'm going to pick that career and i'm going to work at that career and i'm going to you know do things and produce things and this the where we are in the aquarian age the fifth dimension and higher um, is that we allow our gifts, our talents, and our abilities to naturally uh, show, uh, be, be showcased. And we nurture and we nourish those things. And when we do this, we are led into areas of service which we may not uh, and would never imagine that we uh, we would work. For instance, I had a uh, a healing practitioner friend in Australia, and um, she um, uh, she was had been a healing practitioner for a while. Anyway, her clients were blocked, and she couldn't understand that. And we were speaking one day while well, we we're over coffee or whatever, and and she said, "I keep getting um, these references uh, for Tibet. I don't know why. I've never been to Tibet." Um, and, uh, and she decided to not try to figure this out. She actually went there and when she was there, uh, she found that, uh, she was led to an orphanage, um, and she was able to, her gifts, her talents and her abilities to be able to help these orphan children there and so uh she filled her with so much joy and she had so much purpose that when she went back she organized her life and then she she was paid for this so that six months six months she would be in uh in tibet and six months she would be in australia and she said i i never would have picked this for myself to do but she also um uh, found out that she had lifetimes 
um, uh, as a Tibetan master. Anyway, uh, uh, what the Posse of Angels are saying, Stephanie, is please don't pigeonhole yourself to think of where you're going now as only a career because that's jumping up to use our limited linear minds trying to figure out rather than creatively expressing ourselves using our gifts and talents and being in joy and then opening our eyes. Like I said in the the channel today, trust your gut, ask for signs and then keep taking inspired action and stepping forward to that. Don't try to figure it out. Um, What will trip up a lot of people is when they ask that is then they'll be sent sent something that maybe takes them overseas or takes them out of state or where they'll have to move or, you know, um, different things to what they could have ever possibly expected. But it will be for the greatest good of yourself and it will be for the greatest good of all concerned. So I think this is a really important, I'm so glad you brought this up. Because as we're going into um, uh, the full moon with Uranus last week, with so many of our, the fulfillment of our prayers um, uh, manifesting in this, in the summer months, um, we will be given information and all we need to do is trust our gut and step forward. So, um, oh, okay. All right. It's a, so, it's so a, we're, yeah, so somehow it'll, I'll sort of be led in, in that direction. Yeah, because I keep feeling like I'm, uh, you know, like stuck and I need money for things. And I would love to be able to, you know, speaking of orphanages, I would love to have children someday and all these things. But I worry so much about the money you know, involved in that that I don't have. But also I need to figure out my health first. And that I can't seem to afford to care for. So, I, I, you know, and I was wondering if I were doing something that I loved, if that would have sort of a healing effect on my health. And Absolutely. maybe by not doing it, you know, my body's kind of like trying to give me a message and I'm trying to sort of figure it out. And I'm not really getting very clear uh, guidance or about what to do, you know, inspired well, action wise. Well, we spoke, well, if just because it's, you haven't been given the sign, not now, doesn't mean not ever, okay? And we spoke about this in a number of different um, uh, calls that you've made into, into my uh, radio program that, you know, with, like with painting or like with, um, you know, doing things that your soul loves to do. Um, because then that improves the immune system, it nourishes who you are, um, and then it raises your vibrational frequency to speak the same, um, the same language as the universe, which is a high vibrational frequency, to then bring you the fulfillment of your intentions and your desires. Let's go to the cards and see what comes out. Okay, the first card for you that comes out is the page of... Um, the page of uh, spring, which is the page of wands. Now, this is the card of taking inspired action, of being fired up inside. Um, Everyone needs a purpose. It's not just one purpose. Everyone needs to feel that they're, they're contributing, even if it's contributing to their creativity, because if we don't and we just jump on, just jump up to our head, we're stagnant. And all we do is live in our heads the whole time. By doing and creatively expressing ourselves, we feel good about ourselves, we feel abundant, and then more abundance um, shows up in our, um, in our lives. The next one, the next card that comes in is the Knight of Wands. And the Knight of Wands is about movement is about making movement to that which um, makes your heart sing. Um, And by doing this, by doing what the Page of Wands is telling us to do, which is, you know, creating, 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 and having that joy inside, then it will bring us reasons to move and travel and 
and increase that movement in our life. And the next card that's coming out for you is um, the justice card. And the justice card is about our truth. Um, again, life was never meant to be figured out. It was meant to be experienced. And the more we experience it in joy and creative expression, then the more that appears in our reality. So I've got another caller to go to, Stephanie. I hope that's been helpful. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Interesting to you. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have Beth from California. Beth, you're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff and Angel Healing House Radio. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am very, very well. What's happening in your world? Oh, just trying to figure out what this moon is doing because my sleep last night was a little... Uh disturbed every hour, but I think it's the moon bringing in all this exciting energy yes. and um, just kind of taking care of myself, trying to nurture myself through that process. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find that um, I too had an interrupted sleep last night. Um, and uh, wow. a, lot of, a, a lot of people don't know that um, that it's not just, you know, the night of the of that full moon. It because we're so sensitive now and we've cleared and cleansed so much that those of us that are really clear, we our our sleep patterns, our emotions, um, uh, we're being affected like like days and days before the moon, uh, the full moon, and also afterwards. So there could be really a period of about a week and, you know, or more where we just, we feel like we're off kilter. Um, also, yeah. what, we're, what we're also picking up is, um, <laughs> even without it being the full moon, is uh, so many of us are feeling excitement. We're feeling that we've run a marathon. We feel like uh, we've gotten to the end of the finish line. Um, and like Stephanie, we can't quite figure out, which we're not supposed to figure out, but what that next step will be. And, uh, and our anticipation is causing us to be very excited. I remember about four, four days ago, I was just lying there in the middle of the night and I was excited. I couldn't sleep. I don't know what I was excited about, but it's the anticipation of, you know, all of the connections and all of that, that, that uh, magical energy of our, of our prayers, of our wishes, of our dreams, of our intentions that have gone out to the ethers and, and started connecting people and things in order for us to be of greatest service. And I, for one, am so excited. So um, it's the full moon. It's the excitement of the summer months here in the Northern Hemisphere, as I said, or the, um, the winter uh, going in, in the Southern Hemisphere, um, and what that's going to bring to us. Yeah, I feel like May, it felt like my the level of love and joy um, became profoundly deeper and wider and more, more. Um, and I'm just curious as to what June's got in store. Okay. Uh, I'll pull some cards for June. But as soon as you said that, the level of love, I just got shivers all over. And that the reason for that was many in the collective, the penny dropped for many in the, in the conscious awakened collective that they could love unconditionally it wasn't as if i will love this or i will love that if that person yeah. or that that organization does something because that's hanging our love on a hook and saying okay you know i'll only be um, i'll only feel love if you do something in return and love does not work like that yeah it felt easier to get back to the love every time something would feel like a trigger or something would feel like it's pushing towards me or to the energy felt um, chaotic. Then it would get back to the love really quickly as soon as I observed it and noticed it. Yes. 
Yeah, it's uh, and don't forget that um, many of us have been on this uh, on this marathon for a very very long time uh, in this lifetime and also in other incarnations, raising the uh, raising the uh, the vibrations the vibrational frequency on the planet, um, and you know. We only learn things, um, I often say we learn our best lessons by contrast, but, you know, uh, maybe maybe years ago, uh, those of us who are spiritual teachers, we talked the talk. We knew all the spiritual knowledge and we helped others, but we hadn't turned it, turned the mirror back on ourselves and we cert- were, certainly weren't walking the walk. And so the last couple of years, really, maybe two, five years has been spent in really living it ourselves, walking the walk. Yeah. And, and now we've taken that spiritual practice, uh, spiritual knowledge and made it a practice that we do love unconditionally. Um, and it doesn't matter what yeah. appears in our, in our circumstances. Yes. Well, what does June have in store? Let's go to the cards and see what June has in store. With all this excited energy, with the full moon opening things for us, the Uranus Taurus energy of last last week. Let's see. First card out for us is... <laughs> this is interesting. It's the Four of Cups. Now, the Four of Cups is generally the card of relaxation and rest. Now, the, what the Posse of Angels are saying about this card is, again, don't try to force things like the swan, the swan card that came in today. Gently go into June. Don't expect on June 1st that wham, you know, you'll get that opportunity that you've been, you know, praying and pleading for. I guess oh, this is about. Oh no. Guess, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I guess this is about practicing the art of allowance and allowing it to come yeah. to you, knowing full well that it's yours. And a lot of people say, well, if I if I don't get it straight away, somebody else will get it. <laughs> and the posse of angels always laugh because they laugh not at us but with us because they say it's meant for you. There's no way that you could. This is divinely fated, and so just rest in the knowledge that it's for you. Okay. The next card that's coming out is the Temperance card. Now these two cards are seemingly the same. Um, you know about patience, about filling your cup in June, um, about, uh, balancing your life out. Okay. Um, about knowing that all, okay. They're saying everything that we have done. Okay. That's for me, 15 years since I incarnated back since my walking experience, but everything that anybody's ever done, that's been kind, that's been loving, that's helped people, it's now coming back and that karma is balancing. And they're saying that God has a very long memory. And what that means is think back every time, Beth, that you have helped somebody else and with no thought of any monetary remuneration or, or what they were going to do in, uh, in return that is all stored and now coming back to you. And it's going to be more extraordinary than you can ever imagine. Um, and that's what's happening for many of us. Many of us who were divinely led to do this work, um, we did it, we gave it away, you know, we helped others, we devalued ourselves for a while until we learned to trust and uh, respect and honor our value. Um, and But we did it because we wanted to help others get on board of the train of ascension. Now, the balance of karma is coming back in. And, uh, and, and it's going to be more extraordinary than we can possibly imagine. The next card coming out woo-hoo. for many... Yes, woo <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, many of us are going, yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, exactly. the, next, the next card that's coming out for us is, da -da -da -da, this is the Ace of Pentacles, which is the Ace of Coins. Yes, which is the Ace of Coins. I mean, this is, this is the monetary um, and uh, the wealth, the riches. You know, we can have an abundance of, uh, of a job, uh, not a job offer, but an opportunity which helps us to be of best service, which sees us um, secure in the knowledge about our earthly finances. Um, and this is certainly uh, bringing us, you know, uh, that foundation that we will be able to work towards. Um, but that only happened because we allowed ourselves to be creative. We allowed ourselves to nurture and nourish what we were given to create the books, to create the screenplays, to create the radio programs, the blogs, the newsletters, as we served the divine within ourselves and then sent that message out. And now it's going to bring us back a wealth of opportunities. Okay, so... Let's go with let's go with one more card since it's this is the card. Okay, this is the this is the movement card. Um, it's the six of uh, swords, and unlike the other movement card that Stephanie got, which was the knight of uh, knight of wands, um, this movement card means that we have felt like we were either in rough waters or things were stagnant for us and the ice is breaking and we can move again. So June heralds an amazing forward time, which is con going to continue to build towards the lion's gate of 8-8, uh, that amazing portal and that gateway of energy that's opening up on August 8th for all of us. So um, it's, it's really a time where we should be patting ourselves on the back, saying thank you, just keeping our eyes open. And a lot of strange things are going to be happening, but um, strange meaning magical, not strange bad in our lives um, to show us the direction that we need to go in and, uh, and just be prepared to be of the best service and to step up and follow your instincts, follow your gut when uh, when it's presented to you. So I hope that's been helpful. Yes, I'm very excited about June. Yes, I'm very excited about June too. And a lot of us are excited when we don't know what we're excited about, um, which is yeah, like you so. know, a, a, a child wiggling with excitement. But uh, but we know. We know that we, we are under the providence of God and the angels and that we will be shown how to step up, how to step forward and be of best service. So it is a very exciting time. And they Yay, wanted me to, they wanted, so the, Beth, they wanted me to choose one more card and the magician came okay. out. Okay. The Magician came out, which is, a, <laughs> which is a number one card. This is an alchemical card. This is a card about we know we're multidimensional. We know we're multidimensional in a human body. And now we are conjuring up those intentions into physical form. So this couldn't be a better card to end this reading on. I'm sending you so much love. Love to you, too, and yay, yay, yay. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Okay, take care. Have a blessed day. You too, sweetie. You too, sweetie. Love you. Love you. Bye. And that just about wraps the show up to, for today. Thank you to my callers. Thank you for calling in. Thank you to everyone who's listening. Remember... Uh, that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week at Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you would like to listen to the previous shows and to the many topics uh, that have been channeled from the Posse of Angels, you can go to my host page, the Angel Healing House Claire Candy Hoff, 
uh, host page on Transformation Talk Radio. And um, the last uh, year and a half shows are on there. So everyone, uh, uh, if you also, if you want to um, find out more and the information about One True Home behind the veil of forgetfulness, find out about those soul contracts and what the heck we did do in the afterlife, please go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. And everyone, remember to go out and fashion an absolutely unbelievable life for yourself. I'm sending you love and angel blessings, and I look forward to seeing uh, seeing you and to speaking with you again next week. See ya. Mm-hmm.